In tonight's show, Ergon legend Terry Doe takes a look at how best to walk and stalk in your local woods using the amazing Benjamin Marauder Woods Walker. Every wood the length and breadth of the country is filled with woodland pests. In your own woods where you stalk, those pests can cause havoc and affect your hunt. Squirrels, pigeons and other woodland animals can destroy feeders, chew and create a mess in your high seats or give away your location when walking and stalking. So, how do you keep those woodland pests in check and get the upper hand whilst doing so? Terry Doe is an airgun legend and there aren't many air-powered rifles that have escaped his grasp. Terry is a fountain of knowledge in the airgun world and today he gets his hands on the Benjamin Marauder Woods Walker Carbine to take us through his tips on how to walk, stalk and conceal yourself in your local woods. The Benjamin Woods Walker is the perfect companion for a walk in the woods. Small enough to fit in your rucksack accurate and fun to shoot. The Woods Walker unleashes magnum power in a pint-sized package. In Realtree AP, it's also easy to conceal from your quarry for when you need to get close and stay hidden. With its eight-shot rotary magazine and crisp two-stage trigger, the Woods Walker is perfect for plinking pesky critters. Armed with the pocket-sized plinker like the Woods Walker, Terry shows us how to get most success from a critter bashing walk in the woods. Whether it's the wilds of Africa, or the Texan bush, or even in the backwoods of Sudbury, Terry's tips can help you get more success from your time in the woods. As with everything to do with shooting, there's a right way and about 200 wrong ways to do it. Luckily, again, as with most things, it's perfectly simple. If you're walking in the woods, you're in your quarry's habitat, not yours. You're out of your comfort zone. You're in a place where they know every sound, every smell. They know it, you don't. So what you do is you make yourself the least intrusion you possibly can. And the best way to do that is to move slowly and carefully. When you're walking, always scan ahead at least five paces for twigs, branches, anything that might crack underfoot or might make you stumble. Don't just walk around with your head up all the time looking in the trees because you'll cause disturbance you don't need to cause. It's very simple. Now, when you're walking around these woods, keep your eyes open at all times, not just for quarry, but for their signs. Look for pigeon droppings on the foliage on the, on the floor of the wood. That will suggest a roosting place. Also, stop and listen. If it's quiet enough, and it usually is, you can even hear the squirrels claws scraping on the bark of the tree. You can actually hear them. Sometimes you can see debris falling from the tree where the squirrel is maybe stripping a pine cone or something up there and he's dropping bits down onto the floor of the wood. Be quiet, move slowly, stop every five or ten seconds, look around. The other thing, move in complete confidence that if you've seen or heard one pigeon or one crow or one squirrel you're guaranteed to have at least three or four of them watching what you're doing that you can't see. So when you're stalking around, if you're moving from one tree to another, assume there's something in that tree, because nine times out of ten there will be, and if that thing clatters out of the tree, it alerts something for miles around. If you're actually stalking one bird or one squirrel, use your natural screens. Get a tree trunk between you and the animal so you can hide behind it as you move forward. You can keep an eye on it now and again, but if you're moving forward in the open, you will be spotted. Also, lastly, the wind. The wind still counts. It eddies and swirls. 
inside a wood, but if you're shooting ground-based quarry like rabbits, and sometimes you'll, you'll be finding squirrels on the ground, and even feeding birds, remember, try at all times to keep the wind in your face as you move. Okay, it's dead easy. Make this your environment, learn a bit about it, and you'll do far better, I promise you. Sometimes, when you're walking around your wood, you'll find yourself a natural hide, like this one. This is formed when a big old tree has fallen over. You've got to choose them a little bit carefully because sometimes when they fall over, they leave a bit of a pond here that can fill with water and just be two foot of mud. So watch what you're doing. When you find one, the real key is to use it without disturbing it too much. And if you've got a really good camouflage pattern on, like this real tree stuff that I use, then it'll be no trouble at all. Let's get set up and I'll show you what I mean. Now, you can't beat sitting on a beanbag cushion. This thing will support you, keeps you warm and dry, and it really does make the difference between a miserable session and a comfortable one. So, get that in there, and I'm trying now to get behind the screens. Sweep the arm behind, get the ivy in place, put that away nice and carefully, settle down, back against the beanbag, absolutely wonderful. Right, all I'll do now, get my camo sorted out, and we're hidden. Next thing to hide are these things. So, pair of gloves, literally two minutes. I should be pretty much ready to go. Hide that under there drape a little bit of this around here, lean back nice and comfortably, rifle at the ready, and there we go. Now, if I were doing this for real, I'd set up a little bit more, sort of take my time and be a bit more careful. But the great thing about this is, once you know what you're doing, once you know you would, you can set up five or six of these, sometimes 10 of them. And this one gives me a great view of all the uh, local sort of city trees around me. One of them's covered in ivy. We found some pigeon droppings. This thing could be a really useful thing to have. And if I set up five or six of them in the, in the evergreen bushes, especially like holly, then I'll have little stations to go to if one or other isn't working so well. It's all about knowing your wood and exploiting what's around you. Terry takes a walk and spots a crow. What I'm likely to get is the sight of a crow or a wood pigeon or a squirrel I tail in it at about 200 miles an hour very little cover no leaves on the trees very difficult stalking he changes direction and spots a squirrel feeding on a tree branch what he'll do now is he's flat to the trunk usually on the other side. The squirrel continues his business on the way that Terry is moving in. Using the natural cover, Terry finds a spot to shoot from, but the squirrel's on the move. Terry's just about to take his shot, and the squirrel's off again. Finally, Terry gets on his size. The squirrel drops from the tree. The Benjamin Woods walker is bang on the money and Terry collects his quarry. That's one less problem critter causing havoc in these woods. To find out more about the Benjamin Marauder Woods walker, visit crossman.com. <laughs>